Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you for coming this way today. Uh, thank you for your subscriptions. Thank you for your comments and your likes and for sharing too. In this video, I'm going to be starting a series of teachings on the book of Jeremiah. This is the first day of January 2024. And um, the book of Jeremiah is a great light for this season. But of course, it is light for any day. You can always get blessed from the book of Jeremiah. It doesn't matter when you read it. It doesn't matter when. The book of Red, Jeremiah had served generations before this time. It will still be there, generations to come. <laughs> Sorry. But Jeremiah is the 24th book of the Bible. And it holds a pattern for the year 2024. But like I said earlier, the the teachings will be profitable even after 2024. I mean, as it's always been useful. Even in the days of Jesus, he was quoting the book of Jeremiah. So, you know, it's in the Bible for us for all times. Um, and I trust God that as we go through this study, it will, you know, impact your life impact everyone who listens to this and watches you know this teaching so jeremiah has uh, 52 chapters very unique book in the bible and every year has 52 weeks so i trust god by the grace of god that every week in this year we'll be taking a chapter of jeremiah looking into it and see what application you know we can draw from this book especially in this season now in this chapter first chapter of Jeremiah that I'm going to be doing today I have titled this repositioning for destiny repositioning for destiny so we're just going to be looking at Jeremiah and chapter chapter 1 there are about four or five things that I'm going to be looking at this, this, in this video. We're going to be taking a look at the ministry of Jeremiah himself. And as we look at that, we see what that means for us today. What that means for us today. The Bible gives us an idea, you know, what kind of ministry Jeremiah had in his days. We will go to the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter. And this is what he says, the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anatot, in the land of Benjamin. So ben uh, Jeremiah was a priest. He was of the priests who were in Anatot, uh, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Now, this just gives us a breakdown, just helps us to understand, you know, when Jeremiah ministered, the, the, the background to, to, the, to the ministry of Jeremiah, you would find that in 2 Kings chapter 22 to 25. That's where you find the ministry of Jeremiah, you know, from the 13th year of King Josiah up till the carrying away of 
captive, the, you know, when Jerusalem was taken captive. So that happened in 2 Kings 25. Jerusalem was destroyed, the temple was burned, and all that. So the ministry of Jeremiah was an end time ministry, you know, for the people of Judah just before the captivity. He saw the last revival under King Josiah before the captivity happened. Another place you can read about the, 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 the ministry of, uh, of Jeremiah is in 2 Chronicles chapter 34 to 36. So these seven chapters, 2 Kings 22 to 25 and 2 Chronicles 34 to 36, that's where you get the background to the ministry of Jeremiah. If you read this chapter, seven chapters, you get an idea why Jeremiah was talking the way he was talking or why he spoke the way he did or wrote the way he did. Jeremiah, Jeremiah's ministry, what is described in these first three chapters, lasted 41 years and six months. He saw the rising and falling of three kings. He saw 19 years of the 31 years of Josiah's reign. He saw the three months of the reign of Jehoahaz. He saw the 11 years of Jehoiakim. And he saw the three months of Jehoiakim. And then the 11 years of King Hezekiah. So in total, Jeremiah ministered in the season of these five kings and that ministry lasted 41 years and six months. What does that tell us? Jeremiah was a preacher, you know, calling the people to return to God and return to God. You know, I, I, you know it's so inspiring to see the patience that Jeremiah had to minister to a people 41 years and six months. Sometimes we get too tired, we get tired too quickly, we give up too quickly. Jeremiah, it's not as if he was seeing results. Eventually, Judah was destroyed. Ministering 41 years and 6 months. And he was not able to save Judah. So it's not, it's not that everything worked out well. That's, that's not it. He wasn't even a popular prophet. And it's not about popularity. It's all about just being in the will of God. Jeremiah ministered 41 years and six months. At the end of the day, Judah was still destroyed. At the end of the day, the captivity still happened. The people did not turn to God and God did not relent from what he said. Of course, that's what Jeremiah was prophesying. So we can learn something for that. When you feel discouraged, don't give up. When you feel weak and tired, don't give up. When you feel like throwing in the towel because it looks like the people are not changing, don't give up. It's not just about the results. It's about, you know, being in alignment with the will of God, fulfilling the purpose of God. Did Jeremiah do the will of God? Yes, he obeyed God. He did what God wanted him to, to do. Did it produce uh, all the positive results? Everybody will hope that it produced. No, it didn't. The second thing I like to learn from the, you know, the life of Jeremiah is the way five kings rose and went down. Meaning that those who despise the word of God will all go down. But those who hold on to the word of God will keep standing. Jeremiah saw five kings rise and go down. He must have been you know, a vessel, an instrumental to, to, the, to the revival that happened in the days of Josiah, but that revival was not sustained. It could be frustrating to be in a, a prophet in a season like that when you have to talk and talk. You know, Jeremiah is called a prophet of doom because it's like he was always speaking of judgment, speaking of judgment. He's also called a weeping prophet because he felt that these people should have heard the word of God and turn, but they didn't. I pray that God will give us, you know, prophets like Jeremiah who will be patient and do the work. Whether it looks like it's working, it looks like it's not working, but just consistently and patiently preach the word. Whether it looks like it's being received, 
or it's not being received. It's not an easy thing for a preacher to be talking and the people are not responding. And the people are even trying to stone you. The people are persecuting you. You want to change your message because nobody wants to be hated. Nobody wants to be hated. You want to be, you want to be applauded. You want to be talking and people are standing and hailing you. Jeremiah did not have that kind of ministry. Nobody applauded him. Everybody thought he was, he, he was not even a prophet. Now, in this same book, we're going to see, you know, in this same chapter, we're going to see about four things that matter in the life of any messenger of God. In the life of any messenger of God, four things that we find in the life of Jeremiah that you know came into being. The first thing is we find in verse four and verse five. He said, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So Jeremiah heard this. Every prophet, every messenger of God needs to hear the word of God. Needs to receive the word of God. So, you know, I'm looking at four aspects of the prophetic ministry. And this first is about hearing. Who is a prophet? A prophet is one who waits on God to receive his word and then declare it as God would have him to do. Jeremiah waited to hear the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. And that word that came to Jeremiah turned him around. I pray that the word of the Lord that will come to us in this season will turn us around. He changed Jeremiah. The truth is, if the word that comes to you can't change you in the presence of God, it's not going to change anybody towards God. Jeremiah had to change in the presence of God. What was the word that came to him? Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. That's true of you too. Before you were formed, God formed you. Say, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. I sanctified you. And then he said also, and I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. Now remember at the beginning we were told that Jeremiah was a priest. Jeremiah was a priest. But now the word of the Lord is coming to him to say, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Wow. <laughs> it's so sweet when we read these things. It's so sweet. But I can tell you, you know, the crisis that Jeremiah had to go through to receive this. But the point is, it anytime God wants to begin a new work in your life, sometimes he brings the revelation of your identity. And the word of identity will matter in the year, especially in the year 2024. It's, well, we need it at all times, but that word matters. Identity is a strong thing. Sometimes we tell people, I mean, the Bible says, knock, it shall be open. It's not knocking that opens the door. It's identity that opens the door. Because anytime you knock, there's a voice that answers from inside and says, who is that? Who are you? And then when you introduce yourself and we think it is safe to welcome you in, then the door opens. We think it's not safe, we we'll lock the door the more. Some people will come, you say, who are you? You say, when you open the door, you will know. No, I want to lock my door. <laughs> So God said to Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. And I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nation. That word brought a crisis in the life of Jeremiah. Jeremiah had to begin to reposition himself for what God wanted to do in his life. What God wanted to do in his life. Hmm. God revealed his identity to him. Jeremiah's ministry took off with this revelation. So, let's look at what it means. What it means that God said to him, you are a priest to the nations. I mean, you are a prophet to the nations. 
changing from being a priest to becoming a prophet of confrontation like Jeremiah was is a difficult transition for anybody to make. Yes, it takes consecration to be a priest, but being a prophet to the nations, a confrontational prophet at that, if it's just a prophet that is helping people like Elisha, you know, just give food to the people, you know, feed the hungry, give a child to the barren, and then help people, that's a lot better than to be a prophet of confrontation. It goes to people and tell them, you are sinners, repent. <laughs> that's not an easy one. Let me just, you know, say this to you. You know, look at the, the differences between being a prophet and being a priest. A priest only needs to learn and keep the rules of the work. A prophet needs to commune with God on a regular basis to receive the word of God. A priest is a follower of tradition, traditional routines or routinous traditions. You know, God can tell his prophet to do anything at any time. All that a priest needs to do is, is where in Israel in those days is, Keep what was delivered to Aaron. What God told Aaron to do through Moses, that's what you just learn that and then your work is done. Learn the work, learn the rules and keep to the rules, then that's okay. But when you are coming into the office of a prophet, it's not about learning the rules, it's about listening to the Lord, waiting on the Lord. Elijah said, You know, as the Lord lives before whom I stand. A prophet lives in the presence of God all the time because you have to be ready to hear the word of the Lord. So when God's saying, you know, was speaking to Jeremiah and we're going to be applying it to ourselves, God is saying, I'm calling my people to transit from mere priestly ministry where we care so much about the people and uh, take care of the people to move into the prophetic dimension where we defend the interests of God before the people. Hmm. A call to prophetic ministry is like entering into a marriage relationship with God. That's what it looks like. You know, I said a prophet, a priest just has to learn what he will be taught. This is the way it's done. But a prophet needs to receive the word. A prophet is not allowed to receive word from another prophet. You have to hear God directly. So it's a call to communion. It's a call to intimacy. A priest is protective of people. A prophet is protective of the interests of God. A priest is a lover of the people. A prophet is a lover of God. He is, so the zeal of his house has consumed me. He's a protector of the interests of God. A priest receives sinners and gives them hope of forgiveness. A prophet rebukes sinners and warns them of judgment. A priest walks each day to keep judgment away. A prophet can release God's judgment on the people. <laughs> a priest will be offering sacrifice so that trouble will not happen. A prophet will release the trouble. As the Lord lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither rain nor dew on this land. Priests will be sacrificing so that rain will fall all the time. But the prophet said, no, we're going to have a drought and it's coming right now. You need prophets when disorder set in to bring certain corrections. A priest deals with rituals and continuous sacrifices. A prophet deals with reality towards righteousness and justice. A prophet has no time for rituals. A prophet demands change of lifestyle. Repent now. Stop this rubbish or judgment will come upon you. A prophet, a priest gives a substitute for the sinner. Oh, you have just sinned. Okay, let's get a lamb and slaughter a lamb and uh, sacrifice so that God is appeased. A prophet said no. <laughs> it challenges the sinner to repent and return to God. Don't depend on sacrifices. Repent, live right. Live right. So with the prophet, with the priest, the people just keep sinning. That, but the prophet challenges the people to repent. Stop this thing. Stop this. A priest requires people to bring offering for their, you know, for the, to right their wrongs. A prophet 
may tell the people to stop bringing their offerings until they do what is right. We don't want you. Take away your songs. Take away your, your offerings. Take away these things. So that's what, that's the transition that Jeremiah was going to make. God said, you are a priest, but I ordained you to be a prophet. It's a difficult transition to make, but that's the kind of thing God is demanding. Can God stop you from doing what you're doing and say, this is what I want you to do now? That's where the rubber meets the road. Time meets the road. A priest walks in the temple. A prophet does not need a temple. He doesn't. Wherever. He can speak from the bush, from the forest. He can go to the riverside and speak. Wherever. A priest cannot offer sacrifice anywhere. He has to be in the right place. A prophet walks for wherever. God can say, go to the river now and speak there. Go to the house of the porter. You go there. You just go there. I'm going to speak to you. A prophet is mobile. The life of a priest is predictable. The calling of a prophet. There is so much that is not predictable about that. So, but the truth is God calls Jeremiah. And this brought a change. You see, when God is sending a man to go and produce change in the lives of people, that man has to be a change person. There's always a history of encounters with people that God will call to do certain things. There was this, this kind of history in the life of Jeremiah. <laughs> and now, the next thing about the prophet is speaking. Jeremiah has heard the word. I called you. I want you to be a prophet. Now Jeremiah knows that the work of a prophet demands speaking. It requires speaking. He said, no, Lord, I, I'm a child. I cannot speak. God had to do something about that. Jeremiah thought he was qualified to be a prophet. He was not qualified to be a prophet because of his perceived inability and young age. He said, I cannot speak for I'm a youth. He knew that to be a prophet is to be a speaker. Yeah, you have to speak. There are no dumb prophets. Prophets speak. Moses also thought he could not go to, you know, he could not go for God because of speech impediment. Gideon also thought he was not qualified to do what God wanted him to do. The Lord countered Jeremiah and said, do not say you are a child because for you shall go to whom I send you. That's in verse 6. Verse 7. But the Lord said, do not say I'm a youth for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you that you shall speak. That's the life of a prophet. Go wherever I say you to go, and whatever I tell you to say, that is what you, you don't choose your own words, you don't choose where to go. You will go wherever I send you, and then whatever I command you to do there, that's what you're going to say. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Now, what God is simply saying, I'm looking for a generation that are so pliable in my hands. You will go wherever I send you and you will say whatever I command you. That's the life of the prophet. That's the life that God demands from Jeremiah. That's the life he demanded from him. So it's not about I cannot speak. You don't have to go to school to learn how to speak, to, you know, to prophesy for God. That doesn't mean that going to school or being an orator is not a good thing. But when it comes to speaking for God, that is not a requirement. You will go to whomever I send you, son of man or whoever, prophet, or yeah, go, to the, go to that man and tell him ABC. You get up, go to the man and go there and say, the Lord sent me to you to tell you ABC. Thank you. I'm going. That's the life of the prophet. A life of strict obedience the priest has to obey god when it comes to routines what god already laid down the prophet is not even what you heard yesterday is not enough you need to receive a word from the mouth of the lord today to be able to you know speak for him 
So God countered Jeremiah and said, no, 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 you don't have to say that. You know, God had to equip him in verse 8. In verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. That's the work that was given to Jeremiah. A prophet will hear. A prophet will speak. But what is he going to say? What God will put in his mouth. God said, behold, today I have put my words in your mouth. Is this thing I put in your mouth? That's what you're going to say. I pray that the Lord will equip you for this season. That the Lord will, will walk in your life in such a way that what you think are disabilities will no longer be disabilities. You'll be driven by the hand of God. The Lord touched his mouth and said, behold, I put my word in your mouth. I put my word in your mouth. Really? Everything I'm going to say, you already put it in my mouth? <laughs> He taught his mouth to, to give him the mouth of a prophet. So do not allow, you know, perceived inadequacies, perceived disabilities to stop you from doing what God would have you to do. Because whatever God will want you to do, he equips you to do it. He prepares you to do it. He provides for it. He makes a way for it to happen. When Moses said they will not believe him, God led him and said, it's going to happen. When Gideon said, I, I can't do it, God led him. So what do you think is his ability? That's where your strength is. That's why Paul would say, I am what I am by the grace of God. I glory in infirmity. Because when I am weak, then I am strong. Wow. Now, a prophet hears, a prophet sees, a prophet speaks. I mean, a prophet sees God shows visions. God grants, you know, sight to the prophet. And now we move to the next thing in the life of Jeremiah in his ministry that God had to deal with in the first chapter, you know. In verse 11, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? God was showing him something. And I said, a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. And... Uh, the word of the Lord came again to me the second time saying, what do you see? And I say, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north, calamity shall break forth. All the, all the inhabitants of the land, on all the inhabitants of the land, for behold, I'm calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. They shall come and each one set his throne. Now, God grants sight. God gives revelations. He has spoken to Jeremiah, so the test of hearing is there. Now he has walked on Jeremiah's mouth to qualify him to speak. May the Lord touch your mouth in this year. May the Lord touch your tongue. May the Lord touch you and put his word in your mouth this year. So that you will speak what is on his mind. You will speak his, his word. It will be the word of the Lord. It will not be my word that I'm speaking for God. It will be the word of the Lord in his mouth. The Bible said, you know, when King Jehoshaphat wanted to join the king of Israel to battle. And he said, can't we find a prophet? He said, there is, there is one that used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. He said, bring him the word of the Lord is in his mouth. Let it be said concerning you that the word of the Lord is in your mouth. Let it be said that the Lord had touched your tongue. That the Lord had, had touched your tongue. And the Lord touched his tongue and said, Behold, I have put my word in your mouth. This year, let it be said concerning you that the word of the Lord is in your mouth. That when people want to hear God, they will come to you. The word of the Lord is in your mouth. The wisdom of God is in your mouth. So God took Jeremiah forth and said, I'm going to show you. I've caused you to hear, I've walked on your mouth, and now I'm going to help lead you to see. And he showed Jeremiah two visions, two life-changing visions. These are things you see in the life of a prophet. You hear, you speak, you see. 
He showed him first the branch of an almond tree. He said, yes, I'm about to perform my word. As you see this branch, maybe already having ripe fruits, that shows to you that I'm about to perform my word. God still gives revelations. God still gives, you know, gives sight to people to see things. And then he saw a second thing. It was a boiling pot. And God said, what do you see? He said, I see a boiling pot. And he's like, it's back in the north. God said, you saw right. Because calamity is coming from the north. I pray that even in this season, may God show you what he's about to do. May God show us in our generation what is about, what is coming. Many times we are taken unawares. We do not see, we do not know. All of a sudden calamity falls. The Bible says, because men do not understand the times, like birds caught in a crow net, and, and, and like birds caught in a crow net, and uh, you know, fishes caught, you know, suddenly that is how men are when the evil comes on them suddenly. Jesus said, if the good man of the house knows the time when the thief comes, he would have watched and not suffer his house to be broken. That's why God wants us to understand times and seasons. That he reveals things. God said to Jeremiah, come, calamity is coming. And it's coming from the north. It's coming upon all the inhabitants of the land. Trouble is looming. Jeremiah was seeing something. The people were still sleeping. They were not seeing trouble is looming. And people of God, trouble is looming in our world. Calamity is coming. Trouble is coming. God said to John in the book of Revelation chapter 4, come up hither. Let me show you the things that will come hereafter. The things that are about to happen. May God open our eyes and show us things that are about to happen. If we see things that have happened, maybe our lives will change. If we see the way what is about to come upon our world, if we see what God is intending, maybe nobody will preach long for, for people to repent, for people to change their ways. But because there is no sight there is no sight. We do not see the trouble coming. Every new year we clap and say, the year is going to be good. The year is going to be wonderful. And that, those are good. Those encouragement, those motivations are good. But sometimes it is important to re see the real thing. How do you start a new year and tell them, I see a boiling pot. I see calamity coming from the north. Nobody is going to come to your church and say, that man is always seeing trouble, 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 trouble. He ought to be telling us that this year will go well. That you will prosper. You will have money. You will never fall sick. But Jeremiah, God told him, I'm showing you things. It's what I show you. Jesus said, as I hear, I speak. What a prophet hears, what a prophet sees, that's what he's going to declare. So, We've seen Jeremiah hear the word of the Lord. We've seen Jer God walk on the mouth of Jeremiah to empower him to speak. Just touching his tongue. He didn't tell him to go and uh, go and learn, go to speech school. Not that it is wrong to attend a language school or to go and learn how to speak and speak very well and learn all the phonetics and all the, you know, how to get good accents so that when you speak, people will understand what you're saying. So Jeremiah had to go. You know, he, he did all that. And then God was still in preparation. God has worked on hearing. God had worked on speaking. Now God had given him a vision. When you see things and you are speaking, you will speak with conviction. A man who has heard and a man who has seen are not the same thing. I heard a noise. I saw, I saw this happening. You speak with conviction. So that's why God will want you to hear. God will also want you to see. That's why he gives prophets visions. He shows them things in the vision of the night. He shows them revelations. So that in addition to hearing, in addition to learning or whatever, you also, you have seen. And because you have seen, you can't keep quiet. May the Lord open our eyes to see. Here, what do you see? What do you see in this year? What do you see coming in the year? What do you see? What has God shown you about the year? Watchman, what have you seen? Because as watchmen, we ought to see. Watchman, what did you see? Jeremiah said, I saw a boiling pot coming. 
May the Lord have mercy on us. So after Jeremiah has seen, now in verse 17, he said, Therefore prepare yourself and arise and go and speak to them all that I have commanded you. The fact that Jeremiah heard didn't mean he should run. God still had to tell him. He had to wait until God said, Go now and speak. Many times we we'll just hear and then we we'll start speaking. Sometimes we we'll just see ah, what I saw last night and ah, what I saw last week and then we we'll just start speaking. Jeremiah had to wait for a release to speak. In verse 17, therefore, prepare yourself, arise and speak to them all that I have commanded you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar and a bronze and bronze walls against the whole land. I have fortified you. May the Lord fortify you this, this, this season and fortify you. He said, I have made you. I have made you. The whole this day I have made you a fortified city. For all who will go for God in this year, the Lord has made you a fortified city. For all who will go for God this year, the Lord has made you an iron pillar. For all who will stand for God this season, the Lord said, you are a bronze wall. You are a bronze wall. Against the kings of Judah, against the princes, against the priests. Ah, Jeremiah was one of the priests. Now he's turning against the priests. <laughs> against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord. You see, when God actually told Jeremiah to come out of the priesthood, he was calling him out of pollution. The priesthood is polluted. The princes are polluted. The kings are corrupt. That's why God had to come in and say, Jeremiah, I ordained you to be a prophet of the nations. As we go into this year, may the word of the Lord come to people that he had ordained for certain things and wake them up. May the word of the Lord wake you up this year. May the word of the Lord wake you up this year. May God's word, may the voice of God wake you up this year. Ezekiel was a I mean, Jeremiah was a priest, but the word of the Lord had to wake him up. Say, wake up. No more priesthood. You are a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah had to rise up. And God said, go. As a prophet, you are going to be carrying a message that people may not like. He said, don't look at their faces. Don't look at them. Don't look at anybody's face. Because if you keep looking at your faces, you're going to be dismayed. And when you do that, you will be in trouble with me. May God help us. May God help us as carriers of the word of God, as, as messengers of God, to not be dismayed before the people. Hmm. God said to him, you are a fortified city. You are an iron pillar. You are a, 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 <laughs> you are a bronze wall. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail. Jeremiah saw fire. He saw people war against him, but they did not prevail. They threw him into dungeon. He was beaten. He was imprisoned. But 41 years and six months, he kept preaching the word of God. I just want to encourage you, don't give up. 41 years and six months, he kept preaching the word of God. You pray for five years and you are tired. You interceded for your city for ten years and uh, nothing is changing and you are tired. Jeremiah was on the same job with all the trouble 41 years and six months. But at the end of the day, God vindicated him. What you need is the vindication from heaven, not popularity with people. You need God to vindicate you. You need God to show. And you know, it, it's, it's exciting sometimes when you look at, at scriptures. Jeremiah's ministry began in the 13th year of King Josiah. What is the 13th about? The 13th is a time to separate things from things. God separated, Lot was separated from Abraham in Genesis 13. Acts of Apostles chapter 13, separate unto me Paul and Barnabas. Samson was consecrated in Judges chapter 13 because the tent is a season of separation. 
That's when people are separated. That's a point of separation. In the 13th book of the Bible, 1 Corinthians, David was separated from among men. That book is about David, but he began with Adam. <laughs> Can you imagine? The book of First Chronicles, the first one says Adam, from Adam. He began to count the genealogy of Adam because it's a time to separate things. In Matthew 13, Jesus talks about separating wheat from tires. That's part of the reason that once it was the 13th year of Josiah, God picked Jeremiah and said, I'm separating you from the rest of the priests. I have an assignment for you. In the early 13th century, that's when the narratives of the Bible were divided and given chapter numbers because it's a season of separation. Season. So there is time for everything and the will of God is for things to happen in their time in your life. It, Jeremiah was separated at the right time. And his ministry, you know, by the 42nd year, he saw fruit. He saw the word of the Lord come to pass in the land. What happened? The 42nd is when, you know, you see the fulfillment of prophecies. That's when you see the fulfillment of the word of God. It's in Job 42. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job around. Genesis chapter 42. Joseph saw his brothers coming to buy grain in Egypt. And he remembered the word of the Lord. He remembered the encounters he had. Because in the 42nd, the word of the Lord comes true. The 42nd book of the Bible is the book gospel according to Luke. And in that book, God fulfilled an ancient promise. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. The drought that Elijah spoke of lasted 42 months only. I pray that you will persevere until you see, until you see the manifestation of the word of the Lord. Until you see the vindication from heaven that says your job is done. God vindicated Jeremiah. And those who stand for God in this season, God will vindicate you. I pray that the Lord will bless you. We will continue in this series we will look at chapter 2 in the coming week to see what God would have us to glean from it. This is the 24th year of the 21st century and the 24th book of the Bible is applicable to this season. The Lord bless you.